Can I get pregnant from kissing men? Would masturbation make me impotent? Are the use of condoms linked to cancer? Would sleeping with a girl make her pregnant? Believe me or not, these were the questions raised by adults in 21st century India. The land of Kajrao sex temples and Kama Sutra, the irony is not lost on me and it shouldn't be on you either. So India, we have a lot of taboos that we are dealing with. And before I actually start my speech, I have a special surprise for all of you. So there is somebody waiting at the door here whom I would like to introduce to all of you before I start the speech. And this is someone, a special someone whom you are all probably familiar with. This is someone who don't need many special introductions for. So please everyone join me in bringing in, uh, please uh, join me in bringing in a big fat elephant into the room. Please look there and imagine a big fat elephant walking in. It is walking in, it is so huge, it's such a marvelous beauty to see, but damn, it's huge. We can't accommodate this elephant in this room. It's walking, it's thrashing all of you, it's breathing, it's sweating. It's so loud that we can't hear anything over the noise of it. And you know what we do about it? Nothing. We do nothing about this elephant. Please sit back and have your life flash through your mind. Aren't we all living with these elephants every single day? We are all living in these tiny rooms with huge elephants right in the middle of all of us. These elephants represent taboos, things like sexual orientation, disability, depression, mental health, suicide, things that we are trying to run away from. We live with these big fat elephants in the room. And the biggest of them all, especially in India, the biggest villain, sex. So in India, sex is a huge, huge taboo. It is a big fat elephant in the room. The first time I'm hearing elephant in the room in a normal conversation used by someone, he was actually referring to sex. It has been in a taboo in India for ages now. And that makes sex education a controversial kind of taboo. Our politicians are hell-bent on not having sex education in India because it's against our moral and traditional values. They went, they hated so much so that in the year 2016, the Human Resource Development Ministry of India, they prohibited the word sex from being used in adolescent education program. So wait a minute, let's take that in. So we are supposed to import, impart sex education without mentioning the word sex. Wonderful, right? Well, so we asked them how we could do it and they came up with a very innovative solution. So you see, why don't you use yoga instead of sex education, right? Because India became the second most populous country in the world through yoga, not through sex. So come on, let's talk about yoga a little more. This is just to give you an idea about the status of sex education in India today. Now let me take you to the history of modern day sex education in India. So India was one of the member countries that signed the IPCD agenda, which makes sex education free and compulsory since the year 1994. So according to law, every single school is supposed to have sex education curriculum or program as a mandatory curriculum. I was born in the year 1995. I'm pretty sure many of you sitting in this room were born or went to school after 1995. Please, let's take a quick check. How many of us had sex education in our high school? Well, wait a minute, I remember I had sex education in my high school and my sex education in Holy Angels School was a PowerPoint presentation through flowcharts which said nothing about sex. And I remember this one particular day at my house when I came back home from a dance lesson. So I went to my mom and told her, see, I was dropped by my um, dance teacher's eldest son because my father failed to come and pick me up. And my mom, she was terrified. She took me to her room. She stripped me off my clothes and started searching for bruises all over my body. I was scared by this behavior of hers. I asked, what is up, mom? I don't understand. And she said, nothing. Instead, she shouted at me, just like the time when I asked her what sanitary napkins are for. Just like the time when I asked her, why is that man showing me his penis in the lane? This is the sex education that I had. And this is true for majority of the Indian teenagers. 
Because you see, our parents and society, they see sex as something you do and not talk about. And by virtue of being so prohibited, it is actually one of the most sought after topics in India. Let me throw you an interesting statistic at you because I haven't used any PowerPoints and I feel very you know, insecure. So this interesting statistic goes like this. So there is something called Google Trends. It is a facility which uh, tells you the number of times a particular word or phrase is put into the Google, the, the Google search engine, all right? And it is according to different languages and different regions. And this year, Coimbatore, it tops as the city in the list of cities which Googled for sex the most. And if you think it's a new trend, let me take you back to the year 2012. This was the year when India was placed number two in the list of countries which Googled for sex the most. And if you break this down through cities, the first five top slots all go to us, the Indian cities, Bangalore, Chennai, New Delhi, Calcutta, and Pune. This statistic did not shock me. This shouldn't shock any of you sitting here, because in India, we do not have any safe spaces where we can discuss sex, where we can discuss pleasure, where we can discuss sexual orientation and sexual hygiene. And so when we do not get answers for these questions, what happens? This, there is this natural quench, right? This natural quench to know about things that are natural and normal. It is being satisfied through easily available answers, Google and porn. Today, most of our new generation, they are having their first sex lessons from very toxic porn sites. And if this thought doesn't scare you, I do not know what Godzilla will scare you talking about the sex education curriculum in India. So there is this absolute lack of talk about sex here that, and I talked about porn, actually it brings me back to an incident that happened in my school. One day we came into our classroom and we actually found the classrooms locked. We were locked out of our classrooms and teachers were inside, they were going through our bags to find slam books, quite a slanderous thing to have back in those days, I should say, and also to find porn tapes. They found a few, they took it with them, and they thought it was out of the room and probably out of our lives. But no, the next day, more people brought more porn sites because now they came to know what porn was. You know what? I really, really wish that they had done this in a different way. I wish they had walked into the room, sat with us, smiled at us, and said, come, let's talk about sex. Come, let's talk about the consequences of watching porn. Let's talk about the right touch and the wrong touch. Let's talk about what kind of predators you should look out for, not just in the society outside, but also inside your house. Come, let's talk about the trauma that you will go through, and let's talk about how to get over the trauma after a sexual abuse. I really wish that they sat down with us and taught us not to make a big deal out of sex because all the problems that we see today wouldn't have happened then. I don't know whether any of you remember the date 23 November 2017. Well, I do, because this is the morning that India woke up to the news that a four-year-old child was molested by her classmate. This was not the first instance of child sexual abuse, and this most definitely wasn't the last. You know, a child, um, the, a child rights NGO called CRY, it actually says that Every 15 minutes, a sexual offense is being committed against a child in India. I remember this date because this is the day that I decided to do something about it. I decided to start normalizing sex. I decided to start normalizing taboos that keep making life a living hell for you and for me. You know, there are a lot of problems that is facing us, the humanity today, all over the world. There is climate change, there is crisis. But if you ask me, what is the greatest of all these problems today, what would you say? It's exactly this. It is this stunt silence. It is this stunt silence about climate change, this stunt silence about water crisis and every other problem that we are facing. So once we start breaking the silence around these elephants in the room, that is when we'll start thinking about solutions. You see, today in the world, we are actually witnessing a huge revolution in terms of gender equality and sexual rights. And India, especially Kerala, is a foreigner in it with our own Me Too movement, with Arpo Arthavam. And I'm saying let's not just stop at talking about what happens after abuse. Let's start talking about how to prevent abuse. Let's start talking about normalizing things that should be normal. 
let's stop making a big deal out of sex. And before I quit the stage, I would like to leave you all with a small story. So in the year 1814, Ivan Krilov, a poet, he wrote a fable called The Inquisitive Man. So in this fable, he writes a story, the story of a man who goes into a museum. He walks in, he sees the beauty inside the museum. He sees every tiny carving that is done on a sculpture, every small detail of a painting, and he goes back home a very happy man. But he failed to notice the big fat elephant sitting in the museum. What a fool, right? So the next time a kid asks you an uncomfortable question, would you rather be a fool who does not address the elephant in the room? Please think hard about this answer. Thank you.